Hey, everyone, it is that time. It is time for the 1950 census launch party. Woo! And as you can see, I have I have my party hat, got my party decorations. Went to Party City today. They actually had, believe it or not, 1950 census party decorations. Can you believe that? Amazing, isn't it? Hi everyone, I'm Amy Johnson Crow, and thank you for joining me here tonight for this once in a decade event, the release of the federal census, this one being 1950. So excited. And we are just about eight, maybe nine minutes away from when the National Archives is going to be releasing this. Um, I want to give a shout out to everybody who is watching this live, but if you are watching the replay, Please feel free to, you know, skip ahead about eh, eight minutes so you can see what happens when the National Archives website does go live. Whew. And I see a lot of people who are saying where they are watching from. We have people from, oh, we, we have Canadians in the house. All right. We have people from Santa Barbara. We have, um, oh my goodness, we have Cushing, Oklahoma and Wisconsin. Um, oh, Grove Tucky. I know exactly where, I know exactly where you're talking about. Oh my goodness. So yeah. Oh, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. That sounds awesome. <laughs> And that says, right, who's ready to crash the National Archives website? Hopefully we can avoid that. We, I was just chatting with some of my friends on Facebook uh, saying, hey, are we going to are we going to bring down the Internet tonight? I kind of hope we don't bring down the whole Internet. But, um, yeah, I think there's going to be quite a few of us hitting the National Archives website. So I'm actually going to if I do this right there we go. Not too much longer. Hopefully this will work in about eh, seven or eight minutes that I will be able to. No, no, no. Come back. Come back. There we go. Hopefully what will happen if the National Archives website is working the way they say it will, that what will happen is at midnight or 1201, it's saying that we should have a link posted here to where we can access the 1950 census. Does everybody have in mind who they're going to look for first? Let me know in the comments, who are you going to be looking for first? I'm really excited about how they're doing the, the, index or how they're doing the release of the census, the National Archives, this is the first time that they have done this, that the National Archives is kind of playing around with the, uh, there we go, we'll do it this way for a little bit. Um, the National Archives has actually been working behind the scenes and they have been using optical character recognition and artificial intelligence to actually create at least a rudimentary index of the 1950 census. That has never been done before. The National Archives has never done that before. It's pretty incredible. What's also going to be happening at the same time at 12 o'clock or 12.01 when they open up the gates, um, Ancestry is also going to be downloading all of the images they will have to do some processing on their site, but the images will become available over on Ancestry. Ancestry is actually going to post their images before their index is available. Ancestry and Family Search are going to be combining forces. They are going to work in partnership. Ancestry is going to run their own machine learning and handwriting recognition software against the 1950 census and creating their own index separate from what the National Archives is doing. So after Ancestry has that index put together, they're going to hand it off to FamilySearch, and that's where you and I can come in 
and review exactly what is in that index and help to correct it. So this could be one of the most accurately indexed uh, censuses that we've ever seen. And I think it's cool that we're going to have essentially two different indexes. We're going to have what the National Archives has done, but we're also going to have what Ancestry, Family Search, and the Family Search volunteers will have done. And I think anytime that you have a data set that's this big, to have two independent indexes for it, eventually it's going to make it so much easier for us to find our ancestors. And we are just about four minutes away. I'm getting this. I I should have had like like a, a ball drop or something. I couldn't figure out how to do that. So we went with, yeah, we went with party decorations. I see Renee is in El Paso, Texas with Southern Ohio Roots. Hey, let's hear it for Southern Ohio Roots. Yep. And yeah, you're you're exactly right, Linda. Jim Erickson of Family Search said that my heritage is also joining in. So we're we're still going to have two different versions of the index. We're going to have the National Archives Index, and then we're going to have the Ancestry Family Search My Heritage <laughs> Index. So that's that's gonna be cool. That's gonna be cool. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Um, Shelly, Shelly has a question. Oh, it, it's a gold so fast. We got so many people commenting. Oh my goodness. Um, Shelly had a question about finding, um, there it is. Would really like to know how and when to sign up to work on a particular district. Actually, if you go to familysearch.org slash 1950 census, they have all of the details there. I don't know if you can sign up for a specific um, location yet, but all of the information will at least eventually be at familysearch.org slash 1950 census. I know it's so exciting. I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to hit refresh just to see, I know. I know it's probably not there yet. Nope, not there yet. Not quite yet. I was joking on Twitter earlier that, you know, who else may or may not have been, you know, periodically refreshing the National Archives website, just in case. Just in case. <laughs> Yeah, Michael, John, Neil, I know you're hitting refresh every two seconds, Amy. Maybe maybe every four. Two might be pushing it just a little bit. But I have seen a lot of people wondering, because it actually is past a lot of our bedtimes, at least those of us here in the Eastern time zone, what everybody was going to be. Uh, I mean, because it's a party, right? So what everybody is eating and drinking, I will have you know that I'm, I'm going with Cherry Coke Zero. I would have opened up a bottle of bubbly, but it's past my bedtime. <laughs> uh, Monica says, um, midnight in what time zone? Eastern or Central? Eastern. So we are like right there. Oh my goodness. Let's go back and see. I'm not seeing anything yet. Come on, I'm showing midnight. Oh, they're going to keep us waiting. Oh my goodness, it's there, it's there, it's there, it's there. 1950census.archives.gov, right there. I'm going to click it. Let's see what happens. Oh my God, goodness, this is so exciting. I'm going to, so, so y'all can see the web. Of course, I know you, you're, you have the website open up in another window. I know that. <laughs> okay, you know what? I've been doing a little bit of homework ahead of time, although I'm going to be a good researcher and I'm, I'm going to at least pretend that I'm reading all of this. Okay, 6.57 million people in the population. 
234 enumeration districts. Okay, tips for searching. Search for the first and last name of the head of household plus the state and county of residence if known. Okay, guys, so that's an important thing to keep in mind when you're doing your searches. Search for who you think the head of household is. I, I thought that that was going to be the case with the National Archives um, Index. So search for head of household plus state and county of residence if known. All right, I'm going into search. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. State, I'm going to, oh, we have drop downs. Okay, that's interesting. I'm gonna scroll, scroll, scroll to Ohio. I'm going to scroll down to Perry, because I want Perry County. Name, first name and or last name, Ralph Ramsey. All right, here we go. Okay, so it opens up here in the same window. That's kind of cool. And I'm actually using, my mouse has a, has a scroll wheel. So that's how I'm zooming in and out. I'm actually trying to see Hmm. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. We actually have images. All right, but where is he? Where is he? There's Clifford and Mabel. Where's Ralph? Is Ralph on the next page? No. Hmm. Newsom, Johnson, Johnson, Chevalier, Givens, Hiles, Ramsey, Clifford, and Mabel. Hmm. And actually, did it take me to where I thought it should be? No. Okay, this is also interesting. This is this is interesting here. Um Okay, so these are the these are the out of order lists. Interesting. Okay, who has who has found one? Has anybody found their person yet? Ooh, oh, I see how it's working now. Now I see it. Now I see it. Okay. So You do see this image here at the top when, when you do a search, it opens up the first image, but if you scroll down the page, it gives you other results. And I know from some previous um, census work that I did trying to identify the enumeration district, I'm guessing it's this one in enumeration district 6414 with Ralpha Ramsey. I bet this is the one. So hopefully if I open, yes, that's how that works. So as you're scrolling down the page, you can, you can keep hitting the little button that says population schedules and that should open up the image. Okay, there's Frank and Luke. Oh, we're getting so close because I know these names. Hamilton, Pattinson, Moorhead, Shelton, Monnet, Smith, Beck, Cooper, Ryder, Mert Hussey, no one home, no one home, Frank and Luke. Oh. It does give you now this is always fun trying to explain things the very first time that you see it, that it does give you the names as the machine has read it. So not only could you pay attention to the enumeration district, 
paying attention to the other names that are listed. Maybe you can pick out some family names, but remember it's only picking out the head of household. So I'm still trying to figure out why it's showing me on this one that there is somewhere a Ralpha Ramsey. Maybe that's on line 15. Nope, that's Ralph Smith. What's interesting is that I know that Frank and Luke are Ralph's brothers, so I know that this is close. Hmm. All right. So I'm thinking that that he was not indexed correctly according to the National Archives. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try something else. Instead of looking for Ralph Ramsey, because his that surname is fairly unusual, even in Perry County, I'm going to come back up here on the left, up here at the top, and it looks like we can clear out some of our searches or some of our search um, parameters. So I'm going to remove Ralph Ramsey. I'm still going to keep Perry County, Ohio, but now I'm just going to look for Ramsey and see if there's anything else, especially in that enumeration district 6414. There's Frank and Luke. Nope, he's not there either. All right. I'm going to try something. I don't know if the National Archives website will allow this. I wonder if it will accept wild cards. Now, a wild card is when you take a special character, usually an asterisk or a question mark, and put that in place of some letters. So I'm wondering if I do R-A-M, oops, asterisk and see what that does. See if it even allows it. Not really. Okay, so wild cards don't seem to really work very well. Okay, so, and I suspected that this might be the case, that this early um, iteration of the index was going to be a little spotty because we're talking about handwriting. I mean, it's, it's cool technology, but it has a ways to go. So let's see. I'm going to I'm going to click this to clear the search. And if it will allow me, it should. If I go back to Ohio, because I know the enumeration district. Ohio. Keep scrolling. Why couldn't they have lived in Adams County? That's at the top of the list. And I'm going to come down here to the enumeration district and it looks like they wanted as the first number and then a dash and the second number. So 64 dash 14. Okay, we have the descriptions. I'm going to click this button over here. I'm going to click this button over here that says population schedules, and hopefully that will hopefully that will give me all of the images. Okay, Glenford Village, that's exactly what I want. And then we have thumbnails. It looks like we can be we can scroll through either this way or come down here to the thumbnails. All right, and I'm... Let's 
see Cooper Ryder, Cooper Ryder, Brown, La Crone. Oh my gosh, I know it's getting so close because I know all of these names. Where is he? La Crone, La Crone, La Crone. Perry Starkey. I'm really hoping he's not one of these no one is home. <laughs> and they and they had to get him later, which that was a thing too. Latimer, Shelley. Swinehart, Meckling, Croft, Johnston. Eight. There he is. There he is. He is on page eight, right there. I found him right there. Yay! I'm so excited. I'm so excited about this. All right. Um, one thing that I am curious about, because I don't know if you saw as I was scrolling through the different pages and I kept saying, no one home, no one is home. They were supposed to then go back later and go back to those houses where no one was home the first time. And then they would add them at the very end. So here I'm on page eight and you can see, no, page eight is all the way filled out. Okay, so there was page eight. I want to go to page nine. So it's going to be interesting. I'm going to have to play around with this um, to see where they put the images for the pages where they went back later to get the people who weren't home the first time. Because if I recall from what the National Archives said in one of their earlier webinars about this, that those would be started on a completely new sheet and that it would look like there were a lot of pages missing. I want to say that it would be listed as like page 71 or, or something like that. I would have to go back and see. But that obviously isn't the case here because it's still saying sheet number 12. So I'm I'm going to take a take a look back in the comments. I've got a couple of different screens going here. Take a look in the comments and see. I see oh. John says, found great Grammy. Awesome, John. Yeah, and, and Debbie says, yeah, the search isn't working very well. Yeah, um, I'm going to have to play around a little bit more with those wild cards. I had hopes for that. I really had hoped that wild cards would, would be a thing. Um, Eric says, I'm not finding anybody. Eric, you might need to do what I just did. If you have found the enumeration district, um go in and you might just have to browse it by that enumeration district. And if you can do that, and it seems like it's an extra step, but the enumeration district was a set of, it, it was it was a location, it was a, well, a district that one census taker, one enumerator should be able to cover in the two weeks that they were conducting the census. So if you can narrow it down to one or two enumeration districts, you can go like I did and go right into those specific pages without having to read the entire county or the entire city. Sherry says, yay, my dad and his family. Congrats, Sherry. <laughs> Gee, Greg, how hard can it be to find Ferriolo? <laughs> well, considering that apparently they didn't um, 
they didn't get Ramsey spelled right or indexed right. I and I shudder to think what's going to happen when I research the Daubenmeyer family. Tyler just found grandma. Awesome. Oh, we're finding. Oh, Ralph says found myself. Yay, Ralph. Michael John Neal. Grandma was in the special sample. Okay, that's something else I'm going. I don't know if you noticed this, but pay attention there. I'm not, that was something I didn't look at. Let's see. Grandpa was back on page. If if you were wondering, this Ralph Ramsey, that's that's my grandpa. Oh my gosh, my my grandpa's on the on the sample line. Okay, so <laughs> y'all understand my excitement. <laughs> So when you're looking at these census pages, okay, obviously we want to get all the information, but pay attention to this column over here, all right? And what you want to look for are the people here where it says sample line. So Ralph Ramsey falling on sample line four, he has more questions down at the bottom of the page. All right, so if I scroll down, he has answered, you just match it up. He was number four. So this is, this is sample line number four right there. So he is answering this set of questions here. Okay, so what other questions? Well, let's let's take a look first to see what the main questions are. If you haven't seen any of the sample questions that have been out there yet. So we have um, house and apartment number, serial number of dwelling unit. So that's going to be like on previous censuses where we have seen like house number and then family number. So this is just... This is the actual house number, should be the, um, the, the, ad, the street address. Then the serial number of the dwelling unit, that's just numbering the houses or whatever in order. Is this house on a farm or ranch? Yes or no? Uh, if no in item four, is this house on a place of three or more acres? Yes or no? Then we have agriculture questionnaire number. My understanding is that the agriculture questionnaire did not survive, unfortunately. Then of course we have the name of household. What are the names of all the other persons who live here? And list in this order. Now this could be important as we're trying to evaluate things later on. So it should be listed in the order of the head of the household, his wife, don't you love how they just presume that it's the man who's the head of the household? Okay. <laughs> the head of household, his wife, unmarried sons and daughters in order of age, then married sons and daughters and their families, other relatives, other persons such as lodgers, rumors, maids, or hired hands who live in and their relatives. Relationship to the head of household, their race, their sex, how old was he on his last birthday, and if under one year of age, enter the month of birth. Is he now married, widowed, divorced, separated, or never married? Now that's interesting because we haven't seen it phrased quite this way before. You know, we've had um, single, married, divorced and widowed, we've never had separated before, and we've also had never married before. We always just had single. Well, that was always kind of presumed to be never married, but didn't necessarily have to be, depending on how someone understood the question. So that's kind of interesting. What state or foreign country was he born in? If foreign born, is he naturalized? 
what was this person doing most of last week? Working, keeping house, or something else? And it tells you here what the abbreviations are. So WK is working, H is keeping house, OT is other, or U for unable to work. So they're giving us the abbreviations right there. Um, if H or OT, which would be house, housework or other, did the person do any work at all last week, not counting work around the house, include work for pay in own business, profession or farm or unpaid family work? Was this person looking for work? And if no, even though he didn't work last week, does he have a job or business? How many hours did he work last week? See, so we're getting some really cool uh, insight, you know, in terms of, um, you know, in, in terms of, you know, what they were really doing. Some, some really good context here. And now we're getting into the you know, what kind, more specific, what kind of work were they doing? What industry? And notice that these questions down here, basically from here to here are being asked of people 14 and older. Okay. Which in and of itself tells you something that they're kind of expecting that there are 14 year olds who are working. But then we have the sample questions down here. Um, what county and state was he living a year ago? What country were his mother and father born in? What's the highest grade of school? Did he finish this grade? Just all kinds of questions and I can't wait. Okay, last year, 1949, I'm looking at, at, this, looking at this question right here. Last year, 1949, how much money did his relatives in this household earn working for wages or salary? And if I'm reading that right, that says 800. Also be careful, and one of my Facebook friends was pointing this out earlier, that down here on these sample questions, where it's talking about the military, Notice, if male. So if your ancestor was one of the wax or the waves or uh, the wasps, any of the, the female, um, or if, if, she, if she served in, um, you know, served in the military outside of those, out, outside of the wax or the waves, um, they didn't bother asking her. They only ask the military questions of the men. So that kind of stinks. Because <laughs> we have so many women who served in World War II, but they didn't bother asking about, about their service. So, yeah. All right. So there, there we have that. I'm going to go back over to the comments. Like I said, I've got a couple different screens going here. Oh, congratulations, Linda. Linda says, my mom answered the supplemental. Woohoo! Okay, Patricia says, um, my mom and dad's house address said no one at home. Patricia, go into that enumeration district, scroll all the way to the very end of the images and see if those um, if those not at home entries were recorded at the end of that enumeration district. Kathy has a uh, interesting, and I, I suspect that there are a lot of people in this situation. I don't know the ED number. There are 522 ED numbers for Rochester, New York. I feel your pain. There are about 600 in Columbus, Ohio. What you, what you can do is either on stevemorse.org 
or over on Ancestry. Ancestry has a wonderful, and this is this is a free uh, tool that they have, an enumeration district finder. And I really like the one on Ancestry because it overlays with the actual enumeration district map. If you have an idea of where they were living, now I know, you know, Rochester, good sized town, obviously, if it has 522 enumeration districts, but maybe using a city directory. Another thing you could do is, and it doesn't have to be necessarily the 1950 city directory. Can you get something within a couple of years? And if worse comes to worse, go back to the 1940 census and look at their address and look for that in the enumeration district finder for 1950. Keep in mind the enumeration district numbers are different between 1940 and 1950, okay? Because that enumeration district is going to be the amount of, of area that the census taker could cover in two weeks. So it's going to be different between 1940 and 1950. But if you can find them in the 1940 census, it's at least worth using that address as a possible starting point for 1950. Looks like Vicky's having some good success. Found everyone and me too. Yay, Auntie Jen. She says, I found my mom and her family. Awesome, oh my goodness. Caitlin says, one of mine says, no one at home under it. Again, Go to, go to the end of the enumeration district and see if they're listed there. They were supposed to go back and get those people later. But, you know, we're all good. This is all a learning process for all of us right now. Oh, I'm so thrilled for everyone who is making so many discoveries. This is so cool. Uh, Diane says, this is a comment from Facebook. Diane says, I see the Ancestor ED finder and it was right on. There I was. That's, don't you love it when things work like that? Oh, this is fun. And you see, now this is why I love these censuses. Because I've seen a lot of people say, eh, why should I? In fact, I was talking to somebody on, on Twitter earlier, like, you know, I'm not that excited about it. Why should Why should I care? Well, here's why. Miranda Bailey says, I just found my grandma, Betty June Arnold. She was in high school and living with her parents. I was very close to her, so it is so cool to see this. I had no idea her mom was an inspector for sportswear. That's why we look at these records, because we don't know what we're going to find. Oh, that's so neat. Wow, KR found a great, great grandfather. Elaine, um, Looks like some people are having a little trouble getting into a specific um, enumeration district. Kind of wish that it would let you, because I noticed when I went into uh, that specific enumeration district that I was interested in, when it got to the end, it was at the end. So I wish that it would let you keep scrolling if you wanted to. Uh, let's let's see here. I'm trying to trying to go through. Oh my gosh, there's so many, so many comments, so many people. Oh, now this is fun. Tyler says, "Wow, looks like my third great grandfather was married for a third time. Didn't know about his third wife." Oh, hello. <laughs> okay, so one thing that I want to do. Um. Now that we have this image, how can we go about saving it? Let's see what we have. Well, we have, 
window view and thumbnail display, toggle sidebar. We have links to the, looks like we can send a link to a specific page, which, which that's kind of cool. We can share it. Okay, we can share to social media. That's fun. No, seriously, that is fun. I, th I think that I think that's really cool. Uh, we can look at enumeration district maps. We can rotate, we can flip, we can adjust brightness, contrast, invert colors, revert the image, collapse that. Okay, how do we save? How do we save? All right. Well, I can try to do a right click as, save that to my desktop maybe. You would think that there would be a save button. Window option. Oh, there we go. There we go. Found it. You see, when you don't know, just start clicking things. On the three dots, it's the three dots up here. Okay. If you click on the on the three dots, if no, oh, seriously, drawing tool go away. If you click on the three dots, then one of the options then is to download. And you can download. Oh. So you can also choose how big or how small you want the image to be. I'm not sure why you would want to download something that is 67 by 78 pixels. That's going to be like that big. I don't know why you would want to do that, but if you want to, hey, you do you. I would go for, for one of the bigger options. So if I click that for the whole image, Okay, cool. And it, it saves saves it as a JPEG. If you're going to be doing a lot of these, in fact, I'm, I'm going to go back and, and redo this. Well, I'll click on the bigger one. What I would suggest doing, because, you know, a bunch of us, we're going to be downloading a lot of these right now. So you might want to set up a special folder on your computer where you're going to be downloading these. But I would go ahead and give it a name now. So maybe last name underscore first name underscore maybe state Perry 6414. You know, that would at least give you an idea when you're going back later and trying to sort through all those images. It's like, Okay, this is the surname, the first name, the state, the county, and the enumeration district. And then click save. But again, I got to that menu by clicking the three dots here and clicking download. All right, I'm going to go back to the comments, questions. Heidi says, I just found my mom and grandparents. Uh, Maria says, which size, Amy? I personally, I would pick one of the two larger sizes because those smaller ones, like I said, a 67 by, what was it? 67 by 84. That's going to be dots per inch. That So that would make literally like a thumb, this thumbnail size. I don't know why you would want that. But if you if you do, you know, go go for it. Hey, somebody found an uncle with a name search. Congratulations. Oh, going through here. Oh, oh, Colleen. Well, I can't find anyone. I guess I will really have to investigate this more. I will just watch and admire. <laughs> You will find them, Colleen. You know, and, and that's something I, I'm telling you right now, as we speak, Ancestry is downloading all of the images. It's going to take them a little while, one, to get all of these images downloaded. 
then they have to take what's called the metadata. Metadata is kind of a geeky term, but what it means is it's information that makes these images usable. So the metadata is going to be things like, okay, on this, this file here, this, this JPEG here, it's associated with this state, this county, this enumeration district. And it happens to be page four, which comes before page five. So it's all that metadata together, all right, which makes it which makes it possible for us to use the images. So Ancestry has to download all of these images from the National Archives. They have to process the metadata, get it into their computers, get everything all matched up the way that they need to. Now, as soon as they do that and they get it ready for, for publishing, Ancestry, like I said earlier, actually is going to make the images available before the index is. And I learned this yesterday or today, Ancestry is going to be making the 1950 census a free collection. So you will still need to have at least a free, what they call a registered guest account. So you don't need to be a paid Ancestry subscriber, but you will need to at least have a, a free guest account on there to use the 1950 census images. But those are going to be available before the Ancestry index is even available. And for those of you who came in a little bit later, um, what's happening here now, you might have seen me try to search or you might have been trying to search yourself on the National Archives index. That's something that the National Archives put together. They've been running this index behind the scenes so it could be launched at the same time as these images. As soon as Ancestry gets the images downloaded, they get the metadata also downloaded, converted, loaded onto their computers. Ancestry is going to take all of these images and run them through their version of a handwriting analysis I'm sorry, handwriting recognition software and artificial intelligence to create not just a head of household index like we have here at the National Archives, but an every name index. And they're saying it's actually going to be an every field index, which that brings up some intriguing possibilities. But the images are going to be available before that index is ready. So we'll still be able to go in and browse them. So that's um, that's going to be a little bit different than what we have seen in previous census releases. I know with 1940, nobody made the, well, the National Archives made the images available, but nobody else made the images available before their indexes were ready. Okay, I'm scrolling back through here. Yes. And if you're wondering, again, if you're wondering how to download one of the pages, up here towards the top, you'll see three dots. If you click the three dots, if you click the three dots, then you'll get a little menu and you can click download. I would probably choose one of, I probably wouldn't go much smaller than the 1076 by 1248. I would pick, I mean, personally, I'm going to go with the largest. But again, then you just click on the size that you want. Give it a good name. Save it where you're going to find it again. And there you go. I do recommend that you give it a good name now while you're saving it. Otherwise, you're going to have image 4306 by 4994, one, and two, and three. And then you're going to go back. It's like, which image was this? And you're going to have to sort through them all over again. All right. Um. 
Robin, I don't think I'm going to be able to click that that link. I'll take a look at it later. Um, yeah, Robin says, Amy, look at the enumerator notes between the main list and the sample questions here. Yeah, I'll have I'll have to take a look at that later. Right now, I can't I can't click on the links that are coming through on the on the comments, unfortunately. You know, and and that's that's the other thing that I really encourage us. And you all are doing your searches and you're browsing through all these images right now. So I don't have to convince you. I'm kind of preaching to the choir here. Um, that's the cool thing about records. It's the cool thing about research. You might think that you know what's going to be in a record, but until you get in it, you don't know. Like we had somebody earlier who found a third wife for his ancestor, you know, a wife that he didn't know before. Okay, hello. <laughs> you know, that's a new thing. But you never know. You know, what job did they have? Who were the neighbors? You know, it's it's such a cool opportunity that we have. And also something else that I really recommend all of us to do. If you have any family members who are in the 1950 census, or if you yourself, if you're showing up in the 1950 census, take that census page and show it to that family member. Maybe get a couple pages before, maybe also get a couple pages after. And I can almost guarantee you that, you know, presuming that they weren't like two years old at the time, it is going to trigger memories. Oh my gosh, I hadn't thought about Mrs. Wilson next door in ages. Oh, she made the best chocolate chip cookies. Oh yeah, and I, I remember, you know, Mr. Miller down at the end of the street, you know, he gave all of the kids candy apples um, for Halloween. It's just, I, I did that with both of my parents when the 1940 census came out. And my mom, you know, she told me literally every person on her street. It just, it, oh, and, and I remember I rode, I, I learned how to ride my bike in, in their backyard and the, the dad got mad at me because I didn't know how to break. So I kept running into the apple tree. True story. My mom, that's how, <laughs> when she was learning how to ride her bike, she would just crash into the neighbor's apple tree and got yelled at. So take, take this 1950 census as an opportunity. Get, get, those, get those memories. Get those stories. Never forget that you are a part of your family history. So if you're in the census, if you have living family members in the census, get those stories. This is such a great memory trigger. I'm, I'm telling you, I can't wait to, to find my mom and, and show her and, and get more stories from her. Winslow just made a, made a discovery. Um, my uncle, I just found, was a World War II veteran. He passed away in 2005. And that's something that we, we don't have that on, we don't have those military questions for everyone, but make sure that when, when, you're, when you have found that, that household that you're interested in, make sure that you're looking over here on the left to see if anybody in the household falls on one of these sample lines. And then you can take that. So you can see Ralph Ramsey, he's on sample line four. Well, if I go down to the bottom of the page and find four, he's also answering these questions down here at the bottom. And one of those, this last section, and they only asked it of the men, but ask them if they were ever in World War II, World War I, or at any other time, including present service. So it looks like my grandfather was not in the military, which I didn't think that he was. 
All right, let me go back over here to. Oh, Nichelle says, being prepared helped. I found my mom on the first page of her enumeration district. You know, that was really considerate of her to be right there on the first page. I had to go to page eight <laughs> for the person I was looking for first. Oh, here, here's, this is fun. Just found my grandmother's aunt living in a hotel. She is listed as divorced, which I had no idea since her husband was a local pastor. This, this is why we don't skip records. Okay, to show you that I have completely lost any sense of time, Sherry says, I can't wait to show my mom her entry in the census when I see her later today. And when I, when I read your comment, Sherry, I thought, wow, she's going to be seeing her mom really late. And then I realized, oh, wait, tomorrow is already today. <laughs> Lost sense of time. Yes, Junior, the 1950 census is already out. That's what we are looking at. Um, we are here. Let's see if I can drop the, the link in the chat. 1950census.archives.gov, I believe, will work. Well, Jen, you had you had an earlier success. <laughs> Didn't find my dad and his family where I thought they would be back to the drawing board. Okay, Bev, now something you can do. Um, I'm in there. I haven't found myself yet. I think we lived in a township, not in town. Townships are still going to have enumeration districts. So you can still use that enumeration district finder either on the, either the free one on Ancestry or the free one on stevemorse.org. You can still find that enumeration district for that township. And sometimes a township will actually be divided into more than one enumeration district, just depending upon how, how big it is. Uh, Ellen says, what do I need to select to display the thumbnails below the image? I'm only seeing P1. Okay, let me go back here and I'll show you. So first to get the, to get the images even open, you're going to click on the population schedule button up here at the top. But then you should be able to just click on the different thumbnails at the bottom. And then they should they should open up. You should also be able to go next and previous using these arrows that are down here towards the bottom of the image. So just clicking on the thumbnails at the bottom should let you navigate between the pages. And then right now I'm just, I'm scrolling with, right now I'm scrolling with, I'm, I'm zooming in and out with the uh, scroll, scroll wheel on my, um, on my mouse. And I'm trying to see where they have, certainly they have a zoom in and out if you don't have that. But I'm not seeing that. Oh, you can also change the view. Okay, I just discovered this. If you click on this little icon here that looks like, oh, I don't know. I really don't know what that's supposed to represent. Um, but if you if you click the little icon that's next to the three dots, if you open that up, 
it looks like you have um, a single image here in the main part. Let's see what happens when we click on gallery. Okay, so it's just larger versions of the thumbnails. And then you double click to open up an image. Okay. Uh, you could turn the thumbnails completely off or you can have them at the bottom or move the thumbnails over to the right. And I kind of like them on the bottom. All right, let me go back over to the questions and see. Yeah, Winslow said, it's amazing what you can find in census records. It's not just a list of names. Exactly. There's so much detail in here. And the, the questions that they're asking in the 1950 census are so cool because it's really getting into employment and occupation and income. And if you're lucky and somebody in the household is down on one of those on one of those sample lines, they have even more questions down at the bottom. Yeah, Chris, time and space have no meaning. <laughs> yeah, so true. So true. Grandma Funk, exciting. I found my mom and big sister living with my aunt's family. My three-year-old sister had to fill out supplemental questions. How fun now to find my dad. Awesome. Elaine says, just found my uncle and his family. They lived right down the street from us. Uh, Sheila Joe says, found two sets of great-grandparents, but not grandpa and grandma. You'll find them. Keep looking. You'll find them. Um, let's see. So when in NARA, when I find the enumeration district, when I click on population schedule, ED maps, nothing comes up in this site. Let's see. So when in NARA, when I find the enumeration district, and when I click on population schedule, ED maps, nothing comes up. Let me try... So I, I've been looking here in Perry County 6414 for a while. Let me let me go to another enumeration district just so we can get a little different. Uh, the one I'm going to look for now is still in Ohio. It's Franklin, and I want enumeration district 25, and it looks like they want the dash in there, 25-81. Fun fact. That first part of the number, like in this case, the 25, that represents the county or the count or what they call a county equivalent. So Ohio has 88 counties. Franklin County is the 25th alphabetically. So, and, and that's that's a reason why when we're looking at identifying enumeration district numbers, you have to keep the state in mind too, because every state is going to have an enumeration district 1-1 because that first part represents the county. All right, so Ohio, Franklin, looks like I need to clear that out, 2581. Really? I know that's a good, okay, let's try this. I'm gonna clear the search. I'm gonna go back into Ohio. And I'm, I'm going to leave the county out, and I'm just going to put in 25-81. Really? You lost an entire enumeration district. Oh, Nara, you're killing me. Because I have a feeling that... 5 dash. Let's try 80. Let's try 80 just to see. Ohio Columbus Franklin. Let's try that. 2581. Nope. Take that back out.
Now, this is interesting. Why is it starting in the 94s? That is very interesting. Oh, I think I know why. It's because they, they and this, this is a, most of you will not have this issue. Um, actually in Franklin County, Ohio, there was a county in Michigan. There was just like five or six counties that they actually did something different with the schedule. So I might need to look at, yeah. Okay. So let me, you know, this is, this is why you just kind of, instead of, instead of 25, let's try 94, 81. Ha ha ha. Let's see. Bounded by Wilson Avenue, Whittier Champion. Eh, that doesn't sound quite right. But let's say I have this, this um, enumeration district description. If I want to go into it, although I don't think I want 156 pages, clicking on population schedules should show me all of the images for that particular enumeration district. And looking at page one, we can actually see who, who it was who was the enumerator. Oh, well, this is cool. So you should pay, pay attention to that. By the way, if you have any family members who were teachers, in 1950, look at the enumeration districts around where they lived because the Census Bureau recruited teachers very, very heavily to be enumerators. And you know why? Because they supposedly had better handwriting. Even the Census Bureau in 1950 realized that, hey, maybe we should be looking at handwriting ability as one of the skills required for an enumerator. Go figure. Yep. Okay, so anybody out there who has ancestors in Franklin County, Ohio, it is a different type of schedule. Oh, I'm going to have fun exploring this. See, we have the person's name across the top. They're answering the questions down in columns. Oh, that's that's going to be fun to go through. Although I don't know why the enumeration district numbers are different. That's just not making sense to me. All right, be that as it may. Hey, congratulations, Robin. Oh, this, this is a good way to do it. I found a neighbor of my grandparents from the 1940 census and then was able to find my grandparents. The neighbor's name was indexed and popped up. Excellent strategy, Joanne. That's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. And of course, we always have the issue of who is giving the information because great grandfather or whoever answered the questions is listed as born in Quebec, actually born in Ontario. Hey, Jen found them. Oh, these, these records, it's just, there's something about them. There's, especially when you're finding people that, that you know, there, it's just, yeah, Cheryl says, I'm finding people by browsing townships, not finding them by name. Yeah. It's looking like the, um, looking like the National Archives Index is not what we had hoped, not what we had hoped. 
Um, Amy, will you show us an example where you type in the ED and search so we can see what that looks like? Yeah, I'll try that again. Um, let me let me go back over here. I'm going to go ahead and clear my search. So mm, now I'm trying to think of because everybody else I was looking for was going to be in Franklin County, Ohio. Um, Okay, I'll just I'll just do it this way. Um, and I have some distant relatives in Jay County, Indiana. So Jay County looks like their enumeration districts start. So I just I chose Indiana from the drop down and then chose Jay as the county. Then I'm going to. I could, if I wanted to search the entire county, I could just go ahead and search here. I'm sure that there's a Smith family living somewhere in Jay County. Now, it'll give you the image of the first result. And then below the image, it shows all of the names that it has pulled as part of the index. Remember, the National Archives Index is only getting the head of household. And I heard that they were also supposed to be getting other household members who have a different surname. So basically, if the entry has, because take a look here. So they would be getting Kenneth Campbell. Let's say that, let, let's, let's pretend for a moment that this is all one household here. It would get Mary Lanning, it would get Ralph King, but it would not get Mary King because there's no surname in front of Mary's name. So basically all of the lines where there is a surname and a first name. That's why we have to pay attention to be searching for the head of household when we're here. But I just searched for the last name Smith. And I can keep scrolling down. And it is kind of a good way to do it, I guess, because you could see possibly other names might pop out at you. You know, maybe, maybe this this group of names looks familiar. What you can do then is click the little button that says population schedules for that image. If you pop on, if, if you click that, that image will open up. But that's how you, that's how you search it. You can enter a state, you can enter a county. And let's see, let's see what happens if we do go ahead and add that enumeration district, if it will narrow it down. Yes, it does. But again, it's going to open up the image on the first result that you have, but you can scroll down the page and open up the other ones, the other images by clicking on population schedule by that group of names. And then as you want to adjust your search, maybe it's like, oh, yeah, I, I really don't want to narrow it down to just that one enumeration district. You can scroll back up to the top and it shows you everything that is currently in your search. If you don't want that enumeration district anymore, you can just click to remove it. And then it will rerun the search based on the criteria that's that's still there. Okay. So let me go. Oh my goodness, it's one in the morning. <laughs> uh, question quick here from Robin. My mother's parents lived in a rural area. The only address info I have for them is a PO box. Would a city directory have their rural address? It might. 
Um, I know when we say city directory, we tend to think, you know, just cities, but small towns also had, sometimes had directories. Um, think about a county seat, not unusual at all for the city directory of that county seat to also include the rest of the county. It might be in a different section of that directory, but um, yeah, it's, it, it is not unheard of for a city slash county slash farm directory to include those other locations. If you're really having trouble locate them, if they were a family that didn't tend to move around a lot, I would start with the location where they were living in 1940 and, and try to identify that enumeration district. Um, none of the pages I open have thumbnails at the bottom or additional pages may be an error at this time. Yeah, it might be. It might be. Deanne asks, why did our latest census ask so little? Great question. <laughs> I wish I had an answer. Basically, it, it boils down to just the decisions that... Um, the people in charge of putting together the census, weighing all of the information that we would love to have versus the more questions you ask, the less likely people are to answer them. So scaling down the questions in order to get more responses. All right. Yeah, and something we haven't touched on is um, submitting a transcription. We do have, I'm going to go ahead and do that just real quick, just to see what it looks like. Um, here I'm on this page. Let's see what happens if I click on help us transcribe names. Our collection of names are computer generated. Please verify your email address to submit transcriptions. Your contribution will improve your accuracy. Contribution policy gets started. I'll probably make a video on that. But if we click get started, hang on a second here. Gonna, gonna take that off for just a second. I'm just putting in my email address. Oh, and then what will happen after you enter your email address, a little pop-up comes and says, check your email and enter the code. So this is how they're going to try to um, avoid people ju having just bots come in and do nasty things to the index. So I actually have my email open. I do not have the code. So I don't know how long that's taking, but but that's that's what will happen that when you enter your, your email address, this little box will pop up and you should get you should get a code. And then you'll just enter that code in the box and then you can start to enter your your transcripts. All right, I'll just cancel out of that. All right, guys, this this has been exciting. We've been at this for for an hour. Um, just scrolling through to see if there's any. Yeah, Bev, looks like it looks like Franklin County, the way that they had those other schedules, it might have done something to the enumeration district numbers. So that'll be. Um, has anyone figured out how to get to the next page after a search result? Like if you have multiple pages, you should just be able to keep scrolling down. And then at the very bottom of the page, one thing um, I noticed, I'll scroll back here to the top, just be careful if, if your mouse is over the image itself, it's going to act like a zoom. So just make sure that your mouse is someplace other than right over that image. And then, scroll down to the bottom of the page. If you have multiple pages of results, you can click here at the very bottom 
and it'll take you to the next set of the next set of uh, results then. Yeah, something is better than nothing. It really is. Uh, maybe I had good luck looking them up by name because their names are super unique. You know, that doesn't hurt. But really, in this case, what's really going to help us is how accurate that handwriting recognition was. So let's let's hope that all of our ancestors, all of our relatives were living in places where the enumerator had wonderfully clear handwriting. Yep. Yeah, and, and Jim gives a good point. You can search by first name only. So maybe if you've been searching like I was earlier for Ralph Ramsey, I had just thought, well, now I'll look for Ramsey's. I'm going to go back later and try what happens if I search for Ralph, because I want to see how he actually is indexed. Because I didn't find him by search. I found him by browsing because I knew where he lived. Oh, Rhonda just found her dad. That's so neat. All right, uh, where do we search for military? So I'm, I'm going to come back over here and clear this search. So here in the state, let's see, did they put all of the, of course we have Midway Island, Panama Canal Zone, That is a that is a very good question, and I don't. Okay, we have the Indian reservation schedules separately. We have Guam. Yeah, I remember reading something about how they were enumerating those in the military overseas, and I don't remember what it was. Of course, it's quarter after one in the morning, and I'm not remembering anything right now. We we will find an answer, Roberta. We will. It'll it'll be out there. Chris found dad. Um, Wendy says, I saw a lot of not at homes. Did they not go back and capture them later? Yes, they did. They actually did go back and capture them later. They were supposed to, based on a webinar that the National Archives did a couple weeks ago, all of those people were supposed, all of the, all of those households should be enumerated towards the end of that enumeration district. They started basically a new page where, um, where they would basically play catch up with all of those not at home people. And Pam found herself. <laughs> I think the previous question was asking to go to the very next census page to see the rest of the family or the neighbors. Oh, okay. Well, let's, let me, let me go back. Well, let's see what this little Oh, well, that's kind of fun. It'll let you redo. A, if you click into recent search, it'll show you what you had recently searched, which that's kind of handy. You should be able to click that way. Now, that was just browsing. Let's see what happens. Um, if I do a search with a name. Take that out. Let me add that. Oh, no, got my first error. All right, so I have a search here with a name. Oh no, it froze on me.
Have we killed the internet? Okay, there we go. Okay, no, it it's ooh. Oh, that's Oh, that kind of stinks. Oh, did I say that out loud? Yeah, I did. If you do a search with a name, it's like, look, look here. We have we have the Nye family. Harry and looks like Carrie, Edward, John, and Harry. It looks like Harry's 12 years old. What about the younger members of the family? It looks like it won't let you go if you've included the name. Ah. No, it, oh, that's, oh, National Archives, what were you thinking? All right, here's a workaround. You now know where this is. You now know that this is Ohio Perry County Enumeration 64-3. And it looks like it's on sheet number 11. What you could do is refine your search and this, oh, National Archives, I'm disappointed in you. Um, refine your search to take out the name, but put the enumeration district back in. So it was at 64-3. Then go back into population schedules. And then you can use you can use the thumbnails or the little arrows. You know, we wanted sheet 11. Let's see, there's seven, eight, nine, 10. There's 11. Yeah. So here we're back to that Harry, Harry and Carrie Nye. <laughs> what a great family. But now I can click to the next page where I do, I, I just had a feeling. Oh, that's, that's disappointing. That, that is disappointing that you can't browse the images if you did a name search. Ah. Oh, well, I'm glad we figured that out. Linda looked it up. Thank you, Linda. Enumerators instructed not to enumerate Americans, including soldiers, sailors, Marines, and airmen who worked for the U.S. government while living abroad. They only enumerated those living in their enumeration district. Thank you, Linda. I knew that there was something different about how the military was, was enumerated in 1950. Thank you for looking that up and sharing that with us. Thank you. Yeah, Chris, I don't think they're related to the science guy. Although they might be, you never know. All right, everyone, we've been at this for about an hour and, well, I came on a little early. So we've been at this about an hour and a half. Um, I'm, yes, and the, yeah, I, I will make sure we get this, that military and civilian personnel living at Canton, um, Johnston, Midway, and Wake Islands were enumerated and will be included in the 1950 U.S. Census release records. So if they were living in one of those specific areas, you should still find them. And we did see those in that drop down. So. Whew. Hey, my hat stayed on. All right. Wow. It looks like kind of a mixed bag in terms of finding people. It looks like the index is not as robust as we might have hoped, um, as, as we suspected, um, that it is just the people who have a surname and a first name on the same line. So that's going to be usually just the head of household. I'm also... Uh, pretty disappointed that if you search by name, you cannot scroll a page before or a page after. You have to do that workaround to, to get to the images. That really, mm, 
So it'll be interesting to see how Ancestry and the other uh, genealogy websites handle that. I suspect they'll handle it a little bit differently because they're more accustomed to doing this. All right, everyone, thank you. This has this has been fun. This really has been. And I, like I said my my drink of choice this evening was a a cherry Coke Zero because I knew if I opened up the bubbly, I would not have made it until midnight. So everyone, you know, I would say go go make some great discoveries, but it's 20 after one Eastern. So maybe go get some sleep and make some discoveries later in the morning after you've had a good, good, strong cup of coffee. Everyone, um, seriously, this, this has been fun. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that you're making some great discoveries. Have fun with these records. Show them to your family members. This could be a great way to get some other family members excited about family history because this can really, it makes it feel alive. It really does make it feel alive. That's it for me. I'm signing off. Everyone, take care, stay safe, stay healthy, and make some great discoveries in your family history. We'll catch you next time. Bye-bye, everyone.